Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series, a series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good and I can tell you this one's probably not going to be too good at all because I kind of know the specifications of this, but that's okay, we'll just ignore them for now because it might be alright. It's not going to be okay. We'll ignore that for now and just get the introduction out of the way because I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. And well, I've bought something that you folks have donated to see on this channel once again. Because on a live stream that I did about a week or so ago, I think that stream is still on the channel. I think it's unlisted though. I started a stream where I was just going to go onto AliExpress and try and find one item. Just one good item that I could review before I take my break in October. Then we just sort of found a whole bunch of different items and everyone just started donating towards seeing these items. So a massive thank you to all of these folks displayed on screen for donating towards seeing these various products that I'll be showing you over the next few weeks because I've got the item that I'm going to show you today then I've also got another one and another one and we did purchase another item which I will talk about very soon but a massive thank you uh, once again to all of these folks for generously donating your hard-earned money towards seeing me review these cheapo silly items on the channel. I appreciate you all and you all funding e-waste, but I'm glad you're getting entertainment out of this, so it's absolutely worth it. But yeah, I ordered this and we just thought we'd order it for the memes, I guess. And unfortunately, I was told that they couldn't sell it. It was a listing to make up the difference for an item purchased from their store or something like that. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get a used mobile phone that looks a little something like that. It wouldn't have looked like that anyways, but we tried. But the other two items, I won't spoil. They are in my country, so I'll be receiving them very soon and I can't wait to have a look at them. But this is something that I am kind of excited to take a look at because for the first time in a long while I want to go through most of the pictures in the listing for this because there is some funny stuff. I haven't looked at a welcome device in quite a long time with all of the silly advertising. While this isn't quite a welcome device, it probably is though, it's still got that generic advertising so buckle up folks you're going to be in for a fun one today. That's four meows. Five. Six. Any more? But before I continue on to the listing, I'll just let you know that timestamps are in the description below, as well as the pinned comment, so you can skip along to wherever you would like to in this video, because the listing is going to take up a chunk of time in this video, so I'll also leave a timestamp so you can skip straight past the listing, because I know that's not for everyone, but I wanted to go through this because I cracked up on stream. Just be prepared for what you're about to witness. All right, everyone, get yourself ready, because today we're looking at the Soyuz S23 Pro 3-inch display mini smartphone 16 gig HD camera dual SIM dual standby quad core, and this is out of of stock currently. I think I may have bought the last one, but 148 of them have sold. At only $50 Australian, it is a pretty enticing dealio for a small, tiny phone that happens to look like the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which I now own the legit version, so we can do a bit of a comparison between the two. All up including shipping taxes, I paid a total of $53.06 Australian, so I'll display a very rough currency conversion chart on screen, so you get an idea of how much this costs in certain parts of the world. It's not quite accurate. I probably should add more currencies to this, and most of my viewers are from the United States anyways, so I guess it works itself out in the end. The brand name... Soy's, or so yes, we have featured on the channel before. I think I've looked at about three different devices from Soy's, or so yes. I will card them up the top right hand corner if you want to take a look at them, but I know they're tiny little devices. And this brand primarily makes tiny little devices. And with a screen size of three inches, which is the same as the Unihertz Jelly Star, it's a fairly tiny device compared to the legit S23 Ultra that towers over this thing. And with 4.9 stars out of five, it means that people are liking this device because we have this review right right here, which um, feel free to read that. Make sure you take all that in because it's screwed to write on such a dwarf screen. He has very good performance. He is a dwarf, which is what I like the most. I'll just agree with this review and say they're happy with it. All right, let's take a look at the listing because we have the mini body flagship configuration, mini fashionable body design, simple and exquisite appearance, pure Android system, love everywhere, can't put it down. The OS on this is Android 8.1, which I kind of highly doubt. I reckon it's running Android 6, but we'll see. It's got the MT. 6580 in it, which, um, if you didn't know, I'm actually powered by the MT6580. Let me show you. Yes, 
I have that permanently inked on me. You're all welcome. Two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigs of ROM. The dimensions are long and thick. 88.4 millimeters long, model 45.2 millimeters thick and 11 point millimeters thick. So that's one thing I cracked up on stream about is this being long and thick. Moving on, the screen size is three inches and the resolution is 480 by 854, same as the Unihost Jelly Star. Uses Type-C as well, which is good. 0.3 megapixel selfie camera and a two megapixel rear camera. Can't wait to show you all the wonderful camera quality that this thing has to offer. The battery capacity is 1000 milliamp hours, which is not going to last long, especially with an MT6580. And it's also 20 milliamp hours less than a Nokia BL5C battery. We have 2G and 3G bands listed there. They don't mean anything to me because 3G is gonna shut down very soon here in Australia, which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Phone unlocking is graphics and password, which I assume is just pin and password. Next up, we have tone quality, amazing sound quality and impressive momentum. The combination of panoramic surround sound, subwoofer sound and clear vocals, as well as ambient sound and equalizer sound provides a more enjoyable and immersive experience for the ears. You'd think that that means we've got stereo speakers, but we don't. We've just got a single loudspeaker on it, but it's playing Dream It Possible by Dallasy? I'm not defeated, it's not until you fall that you fly. I know I'm changing. Ready for this one, folks? You've seen 5G LTE? You know of 4G LTE? Here is 3G LTE. <laughs> Dual car, dual standby, high speed stability. AI smart star selection and dual frequency positioning technology make your navigation more accurate, your travel trajectory more accurate, and support 3G network and Wi-Fi with high speed and stable network connection. Yep. 3G LTE. Certainly exists. Small figure, mini and exquisite. The mini fashionable body design, simple and exquisite appearance, pure Android system, and the combination of aesthetics and technology make people satisfied. I mean, seeing the real deal stacked up against this tiny little thing does look kind of satisfying, but I'll show you that later on. Mini body card size, small and exquisite with a bank card like design and innovative small volume. People can't put it down. Once again, we just can't put it down. So it's going to be permanently attached to my hand forever. Top six reasons to recommend the S 23 Pro. The three inch high definition large screen with starry display shines brightly. The second is one hand control of the lightweight body, carrying it around without taking up space. The third is flagship multi-nuclear high energy breakthrough. <laughs> What does that even mean? Uh, a smart chip flagship multi-core core. Flagship multi-core core with two gig and 16 gig. Yes, because an MT6580 is flagship, sure thing. 1000 milliamp hour high density large battery, endurance battery to the end. It won't last more than like three hours. Rear HD camera, high definition photography has its own style. How many of those cameras are fake? I mean, for a $50 device, I wouldn't expect anything past one rear camera and one front camera. 8.1 Android native system. Pure Android system is convenient and practical. Hopefully it's stock, I'm not too sure at this point in time. Leaving aside the past and leading innovation, the outstanding feature is the introduction of glass materials with higher hardness than most metals. The process is extremely difficult, reflecting the hardness of porcelain as much as possible while maintaining optical per permeability, creating a smoother grip. Did that make any sense whatsoever? From what I gather, this has glass on the front and back. I don't think it will, but we'll have to see once I start unboxing it. This is what I mean. This listing is going to take up a huge chunk of this video because the advertising is just really silly. One hand control of the lightweight body after thousands of tests by designers. You clearly stole the design from Samsung, but okay. The appearance of the phone is slim, lightweight, and delicately fitted, showcasing the beauty of technology. Well, as I just said, you kind of stole the design from Samsung, but hey, wouldn't it have been cool if Samsung made a tiny little phone like this with flagship specs in it? That would be really cool, but they're not going to do that. Oh, the fuselage. I remember that. Outstanding appearance that I can't put down. The mini fashionable body design, simple and exquisite appearance, pure Android system, and the combination of aesthetics and technology make people satisfied. I'm losing my voice because... <laughs> Uh, color is up next with natural and soft tones, adopting a series of tones originating from nature with a low key connotation, using plant dyes to meticulously manufacture the product as elegant, noble tones, exquisite and restrained. And do you want to know the three colorways? Field green, which don't really see green, I see gray, but all right. Then we have Boya Black. Boya is the brand of my microphone that I use. It is. And then Haze Purple, which that looks pink, not purple, but sure thing. The starry display shines brightly. The three inch high definition large screen provides exquisite and realistic image quality, making every frame a visual enjoyment. The touch is smooth and smooth. Smooth and smooth. Good. with a vast and boundless visual experience and rich colors. Okay, so we're going a bit in depth with these six recommendations to buy because here is the flagship multi-nuclear high energy breakthrough. The flagship chip has been upgraded with a new architecture achieving dual breakthroughs in energy efficiency and performance. Its performance is long lasting and smooth and only when it is fast enough can it be smooth and powerful. These mad lads just called the MT6580 multi-nuclear. We've got high frame rate display, which is definitely not the case, sensitive touch control, quick heat dissipation for an MT6580 
that's non-existent. And stable signal, small, massive, and exciting figure. You cannot have small and massive in the same sentence. Massive and exciting storage space, breaking through the constraints of space, loading everything you like, allowing you to no longer worry about memory. Download music, games, and hot dramas as you please and enjoy yourself freely. Because you can easily install 85 TV dramas, can store 8,000 photos, and massive app download at will with some bloke holding a gun that looks like it's probably from Fortnite or something like that with 2 gig and 16 gig plus the side there. Did any of that make sense? I'm sure it didn't. I really hope you're enjoying this listing because I'm rather confused at this point in time. Endurance battery to the end. 1000 milliamp hour high density large battery type C fast charging from morning to night accompanying you to listen music and play. Still fully charged. I very very much doubt that. Upgrading the mirror in quotes. Realm of precision manufacturing. The high definition rear camera showcases delicate colors and moving moments captures light and shadow details restores color brightness liveliness and realism and produces everything you shoot everything i shoot okay from the next picture the hd lens is two megapixels that's more ultra clear with high speed autofocus a brighter field of view with a 105 degree ultra wide angle lens and more shocking optimized imaging algorithms they're really putting everything into this aren't they have i sold you on this thing yet do you really want to go purchase one of these things i mean for the novelty it might be cool but for everything else probably not ai 5.0 blessing makes your photography easier whether it's scenery dining portraits architecture or beautiful scenes you can easily control and take good photos good photos from this no because accordingly the protagonist is more dazzling and naturally appears on camera i am the protagonist how to take photos how to be beautiful so that your beauty can be clearly presented anytime and anywhere no matter how far or near always pursuing your charming figure and face that means my terrible selfie is going to be even more terrible thanks soys you're the best finally we've got stylish and minimalist mini body shape mini body small size and space saving effortlessly carrying excitement into your pocket making travel worry free that's clearly a good photoshop job right there a for effort but that is all of the listing i hope you enjoyed that that is just so confusing that was just a mishmash of jumbled words and let's just move on to this uh this took a week to get from china to australia tiny little box inside of this so let's take a look at our little buddy I kind of know what the box looks like because I looked at the reviews, but uh, yep, that's it. Aww, it's cute. It's adorable. Again, with the adorableness more. There it is. It's gold. And it's got gold border around it. Android camera, music, mini phone, type C. Can't complain there. Nothing else around the box. Purple sticker means we've got purple. I did choose purple because everyone in chat said purple. And on the back, here it is. AliExpress. V what? This? What? AliExpress vendor. Oh, this is the seller there. Oh, okay. That's not the same seller, I don't think. Even though it says the seller is that, I actually bought it from the Soy's Factory Choice Store Store. S23 Pro, 3G bands there, both IMEIs there. Feel free to look them up and see what they correspond with. That's about it on this little thing, so... There it is. Oh, oh, it weighs absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, of course, it's a tiny little device, but inside we get a Type-C cable. Then we also get a case included with this too. That's nice of them. And an extra screen protector and a SIM eject tool. Oh, here's the manual. Thank you for choosing this smartphone. You're welcome. I'll just leave that on the screen. Feel free to pause and tell me if you find anything funny here. Notes for touchscreen. I do see that. I'll just keep going along. Keep going along and you can just pause and... Oh, s'mores, it says something stupid here. Or it could be all perfect English. I'm not too sure. You'll have to tell me down in the comments below. That's it. I've spent too much time already getting to this point of showing the device. So, case, phone, small. Small. He's small. <laughs> oh, there it is. It is looking very S23 Ultra-like. Take off the screen. Protect up. Well, it has bubbles on it, so I may as well just take that off then. There we go. There's the screen there. You can see our 0.3 megapixel front camera there, the earpiece, and it doesn't look like we've got any sensors whatsoever, but there is obviously some bezels going on with this for a $50 device. I shouldn't complain. Volume buttons on the side there, a hole for maybe a reset switch. Also, the back is coming off slightly, as you can see just there. I can get straight into this thing. On the other side, we've got a power button as well as the SIM tray, which is not the same color as the device. At the top, absolutely nothing. At the bottom, Type-C port and hole for a microphone. Oh, the speakers, the earpiece. Okay, and then on the back, yeah, we've got our two megapixel camera and our fake camera and another fake one and another fake one, another fake one. We've got an LED flash though. Well, maybe could be fake too. Soy's S23 Pro, IMEI's there again, and all that good stuff. So here's a real S23 Ultra compared to this. I got this Spigen case 
Is it Spigen? Spigen. I got this case off Timu for $15 and it seems legit. Came in a retail box too. Looking at the real deal versus that. Yeah, there are some uh, differences going on. It's so small. It's so adorable. But with it being small and adorable means that it's not going to have too much features going on with it. But that's why this video exists to test to see what this thing is capable of doing. So popping the SIM tray out. What do we have on here? Okay, so we've got dual nano SIM slots or one nano SIM and a micro SD card slot. I'll put test in it like this put it here like that and then I get the micro SD card which is this one you put it this one here with a Telstra sim and my micro SD card installed on there that really didn't fit quite well we're almost ready to power this up but I think the back is actually glass. It is. We actually have glass on the back of this. They weren't lying in the advertising. Amazing. All right, folks, it's time to take a deep dive into the tiny little S23 Ultra Clone. Does it have juice? It doesn't have juice. Really? I think out of all of the devices I've ever reviewed on the channel, I think I've only had one other device that didn't boot up straight away. So uh, life support then. I don't think it's alive. Now let me give it more juice. Come on, buddy. I know you live. Oh, the reset switch. Let me try the reset switch real quickly. Yeah, that's a reset switch. Hmm. Ah, fucking. Well, that scared me. The vibration motor sounded like a gang of angry bees right there. I want to do that again. That's a bit loud. Oh, it's at 1% already. I mean, it, it won't take too long to charge a 1000 milliamp hour battery. Is it a welcome? Ah, oh, it's a welcome. With the loudest vibration motor I've ever heard. Does it do a jingle? Da 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 da. Ba 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 ba. heard that before. We've heard that before, actually. I will try and dump the system files off this because I reckon this is Marshmallow. 100%, this has to be Marshmallow, did it die? Yep, okay. The back just doesn't fit properly anyways. It's just hanging on for dear life there. It should be at 2% now. Nope, it's at 0%. Oh, I can fix the uh, back issue by putting the case on it. Come on, buddy. There we go. Oh, there we go. Well, the case fits perfectly. Even got little holes for the cameras and stuff. All right, keep charging, buddy. Oh, we're at 3%. We should be okay now. Come on. Oh, we've just got to wait for the long boot up as well. Well, it says Oreo there. It might be wrong. We got Telstra. There it is. We don't have a home screen. We just have all the apps straight away. So we've got clock, camera, email, settings, gallery, calendar, calculator, file manager, music, phone, contacts, messaging, browser, play store, Facebook, WhatsApp, and SIM toolkit. So very basic. Not a lot going on here, which there's no bloatware installed, but we don't have Google Chrome or YouTube or anything like that. So I'll have to put that on here. Swipe down. So in the usual notifications, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb. We've got flashlight, which put that on. Oh, it does work. Okay. And if we switch that off, brightens up the case a lot. Not the brightest flash ever, but it will do. I won't leave it on for more than like 10 seconds because we've only got 2% of battery life. Look at how cool it looks all lit up. Hey, that's pretty cool. Hi, that's Kibi. Hi. Look, Ripley in good quality. Hi. I know it's bright, sorry. But a rotate, location, battery saver, mobile data, and airplay mode is just in there. Can I add anything else? What just happened there? Sure thing. Hotspot, invert colors, data saver, and cast. So not too much. Oh my God. That's horrendous. Pressing this hides the navigation bar, and then you just swipe up again, and it brings it back. All right, well, it's kind of looking promising so far. We'll jump straight into settings. Network and internet, Wi-Fi. Show me my 2.4 gigahertz network. Standard Gboard there. That's gonna be fun to type on. Connect to Wi-Fi, mobile network. What does it say? 3G and 3G only. I guess I should give this a call then and see if it works. Okay, hello to you too. Whoa, it still works. Okay, that sounds horrific. The call quality is definitely nothing too spectacular, but I'll splice in a quick test so you can hear the quality of this thing in all of its 3G glory. 3G LTE. Don't you forget that. 3G LTE. Testing airbase quality on the Soyuz S23 Pro. This is what it sounds like. And with just 3G only, it's pretty basic and there's nothing really too much to talk about here. It sounds very average at best. So let's move on to the microphone quality to give you an idea of how that sounds. And this is the microphone quality on the S23 Pro. Um, I don't think there's any front sensors on this. It just seems like the camera is doubling as the light sensor. But I could be wrong. I'll have to wait till I tear it apart. But otherwise, this is just a fairly basic microphone. And it 
Sounds a little something like this, which is very basic for this device. Not much else to say, so I think that's it for the core quality test. Connected devices, we've just got Bluetooth, nothing else. Apps and notifications, here we go. Let's see the list. It says Oreo. I'll just scroll, okay, I won't just scroll through that very quickly. So I will scroll through this quickly. Artificial switch, we're gonna open you up later on with Quick Shortcut Maker, because Activity Launch is not really the best. I prefer Quick Shortcut Maker, I'm just used to it. Otherwise, uh, what else have we got in here though? Face unlock, okay, factory test, the usual media tech stuff. As always, launcher three, good stuff. Music, open something, phone, search, settings, storage. Okay, sim recovery, storage manager, user dictionary, work profile setup, bright IMEI, wide GPS. Also, I've just noticed that the brightness is pretty good. That's not bad for a cheapo display, but I'll just leave it on about 50%. That's a bit better. Battery, three hours and seven minutes until fully charged. So safe to say we don't have any fast charging on this. Last full charge is 124 days, 54 minutes ago. So that's why you were dead friend, because you've been sitting there doing absolutely nothing. That's fun. I will do a battery test on this just for the sake of it. And I'll let you know after the camera test. I'll put the battery percentage on so we can watch it go up, and then when I take it off life support, go in display, all the usual settings. But what have we got in wallpaper? Black. We have, first thing that comes to mind is jelly, but all right. Stolen off iPhone. Uh, not sure where you're stolen off. Oh, this. Oh, that's a Pagani, I think. It's slightly low resolution. I mean, it's not too bad. And then we have orange blob things. You know what? I want the car. I think the car looks nice. Let's set the wallpaper as the car. Both. That's fine. Any live wallpapers? No. The display size is custom at 220. But what if we had it at... Oh. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that makes things a little uh, difficult now. Good luck trying to use it like this. I mean, we can see everything going on now. If I go back to the home screen. <laughs> this so... The apps are so tiny. Look at them. The display quality isn't too bad. It will do it for... 3 inch 480p display. I think I'll go back and change the size. I mean, imagine putting it on smallest. <laughs> that was set at a custom one, wasn't it? I think it was. That was set at a custom one because I've screwed it up. I've, yeah, I've. Oops. That's okay. It's more usable now, yeah, I guess. All right. <laughs> Whoops. In sounds, we have all the usual stuff here. Flutey phone is the default ringtone. Sound enhancement, what have we got in here? Best loudness. Good old best loudness. You'll work wonders. Storage, uh, 16 gigabytes of internal storage with my 64 gig micro SD card. Security and location. Screen lock, what can we do? Swipe, pattern, pin and password. Where's the face unlock? Can we do face unlock? Is it here somewhere? No, it doesn't look like it. Users and accounts, I'll have to sign into my Gmail on this. Typing on this is not fun and typing is not gonna be any more fun with the display size now being smaller. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, you know, actually the keyboard's about the same size, but all right. Nope, I can't do it. No, that's foams. That was absolutely painful. Okay, I've signed into my Gmail. Typing like this, sort of with the camera in front of me, quite difficult, but holding it up to my face and doing precision typing, I kind of can do it. Because I'm charging this device, as well as using it, it's getting quite warm already. So that MT6580 is currently going wee inside of this, but yeah, it's uh, it's heating up. Accessibility, what have we got here? Not too much, actually. Google settings and system. Gestures. Oh, no, it's not gestures. It's not navigation. We have an updater. S25, S23 Pro. Doesn't know what it wants to be as of yet. No upgrades. Of course there's not. About for an S23 Pro, we have a unique serial number. Usually these things are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, F. If we look in settings, we have the information of the device, which I have a feeling we might be able to change later on, but it's the S23 Pro. The kernel's MT6580. Sure thing. Processor is four cores, four by 854 resolution, Android 8.1, which, there's Oreo. Is this thing actually running Oreo then? Surely it can't be running Oreo. Well, I mean, he works. The security patch level is October 5th, 2022. Baseband version, kernel version, uh, anything that I can sort of check in there, not really. Build number, that's pretty much it within settings. Since this has an MT6580 in it, I can say that the performance isn't quite the best on this so far. It's uh, pretty laggy, but for 50 Australian dollars, the fact that it works is probably the best thing out of this. But let me start testing this thing out and see what we can do with our little S23 Ultra Mini clone thing. So we've got clock, which is just going to look like the standard clock. Nothing to look at there, but camera's up next. That was quick. Do we have autofocus? Is this a two megapixel camera with autofocus? 
I don't think it autofocuses. I think that's a fake autofocus. We've got a beauty mode, panorama mode, HDR as well on a two megapixel camera. Okay. Settings, anti-shake, not quite EIS, but all right. But I can't change the camera quality. It's just as it is there. And the video quality, we can do 720p and EIS is there as well. And then if I swap to the front camera, I'm wearing my hoodie because it's a bit cold today. Let's go to settings. Oh, there it is. Picture size, 0 0.3 megapixels right there. EIS and microphone for just settings. So I have a feeling that's going to be of really high quality but it's blurry it's really oh god the quality of that is pretty horrific it has hdr on the front camera that won't work at all i didn't see it there it is there two megapixels in settings so yep two megapixel and 0 0.3 megapixels let me go ahead and take photos and videos with the s23 pro thing by soys i will also install a bunch of applications on this to test it and i'll do a battery test on this because why not i'll come back and we can continue looking at this uh, very peculiar device. It's funny, I'm covering a mini S23 Ultra and I've reviewed the standard S23 Ultra clone. We need a middle ground though. All right, enjoy the wonderful photos and videos that you're going to see from our non-purple phone. Non-purple. Non All right, testing video quality on the Soyuz S23 Pro. Now it's pretty windy today, so the microphones may catch a bit of the wind, but let's just see how we go. Now, if I touch the screen, it does seem to manual focus, but from what I can gather, it doesn't work. It's just fixed, which for a two megapixel camera, it's quite understandable if it doesn't have autofocus. Otherwise, like on this tiny screen, Everything looks reasonable, but I'm led to believe once I put this on my PC, everything will just look really, really terrible. This is with EIS on as well. Is it working? I don't know. I've tried it with the front camera and I can't quite tell. It's probably very minimal. Let's just do the usual stuff. As you can see, everything's looking nice and vibrant. Does it look vibrant? Do the lemons look rotten or is it the camera? No, they're actually rotten. He's getting bigger and bigger, this fella. When's he gonna drop off the tree? One day. Is any looking rusted? Getting very, very rusty, though. You're going to be brown by the end of this year. Look at the sky. The sky's looking nice today. And the fire up the aircon looks a little something like that with a four times digital zoom. And can I focus? I can focus, but I don't think it's focusing. Does that make sense? It's focusing, but it's not focusing. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, so that's during the daytime. Let's switch to nighttime and see if it's any better. No, it won't be. It's just going to be dark with the LED on. Okay, I don't have high hopes for this. All right, test video quality on the Soyuz S23 Pro at nighttime with the LED flash on. Hello, how you doing? Uh, there's a bug flying around. Not that you can see him, though. No. Yeah, well, the quality is uh, not the best. I have reviewed the footage from earlier. And everything looks like I recorded it in like 1943. It's got a, like a brown filter to it and it's uh, looking really good. The LED is not really helping that much. I'm sort of like 
a couple of centimetres away from the froggos, just so you can see them. Not too good, and the quality, of course, with both cameras is very lacklustre, but for 50 bucks, can't really expect too much out of this, I guess. It's a tiny little thing that works. Well, that's all I can really say, is it just works. I guess that's it for night time. I hope you're enjoying watching this camera test. So this is the front camera on the Soyuz S23 Pro. It's so tiny and adorable. This is with no EIS on. Um, oh god, there we go, jelly movement. Whoa, look at me go. That's fun. No autofocus or manual focus or anything like that, just fixed 0.3 megapixel thing, but it works. I mean, on the tiny little display, it looks okay. It looks alright, but um, obviously the quality is not going to be good. Can I zoom in, by the way? Oh, I can zoom in. Hello. How you doing? Um, alright, let me just quickly try with EIS on, just to see if it makes any difference. Do we have EIS on the 0.3 megapixel front camera? Doesn't look like it. There's like probably a 0.2% chance that there's some sort of stabilization going on, but if I sort of just minimally move it, you can see it just sort of... Did that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Just ignore me. Ignore my idiotic stuff. Don't worry. I'm silly when it comes to recording with these devices. It's loaf time. Hey. There you go, loaf. I should do this with all camera tests now, just, just bring her outside and just go, look, see, does it look good? Can you see with it? Oh, I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? All right, let's go find burbs. You wanna go find burbs or not? No find burbs, okay. She jumped out of my arms. A fly came inside. Oh. I should have done another green screen bit, but I really don't need to because there's a lot of things I need to talk about with uh, this device. Well, there's not too much I have to talk about, but I'm still going to ramble on it anyways. So you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with this. Why do all of the photos and videos look like they've got a filter over them that makes it look like they've been taken in like 1885? That's only with the rear camera. The front camera doesn't quite have it. Also, the resolution of the photos was 3072 by 1728. It's some sort of weird aspect ratio that it takes photos in. Then the front camera takes photos in 1280 by 720. Now, if it was 0 0.3 megapixels, we'd get 640 by 480. If it's taking photos in 1280 by 720, that means we've got a one megapixel camera on there. Or here's the alternative answer, it interpolates. That's possibly what could be going on here because there's no way that's more than two megapixels and there's no way that's more than 0 0.3 megapixels, but I could be completely wrong though. Once we start checking the specs and stuff, I'll be able to further clarify what's going on there. Otherwise, 720p video on the rear camera and 480p on the front camera and video wise is nothing to really talk about. Now the second thing is, I tried to take the SIM card tray out and it broke. So my Telstra SIM and 64 gig micro SD card are stuck in there. I can't get it out. So we're gonna have to just take the whole thing apart and just rip it out, which may possibly kill the SIM slot and micro SD card slot, but I can't do too much with that. Next thing is battery life. If you just leave this, don't touch it at all. The battery will actually last quite a long time. It lasted, I think, two or three days on standby. I've got a picture here of me just leaving it and not touching it. But the minute I went to start using this, the battery life just goes, we dead. That's the MediaTek MT6580 and the 1000 milliamp hour battery come together as a bit of a lovely combination there. When I went out to go take the photos and videos, it was at 100% when I went out there. It was at 22% when I came back in. Battery life on this little fella is not that good. Another thing also is performance on this is really lacking at this point in time. And there's honestly not too much I can do about it though. Blame the MT6580. I can safely say that this is the cutest MT6580 device that I've reviewed though. That's a positive about this. Anyways, let's keep moving on because I have put all of these applications on here to test it. So I've got San Andreas on here, I've got Geekbench on here, Device Info Hardware, I've put YouTube on, CPU System Info, Quick Shortcut Maker, all that sort of stuff so we can test things out. But I'll just go through the usual applications just to see if there's anything else that we need to open. So Gallery, um, I'll just quickly go onto one of the photos that I took. You're telling me that that was taken in 2023? Well, that one kind of looks like 2020 to be honest, but that just does not look like <laughs> a shot from 2023, that's for sure. And yes, you got to see Ripley and you can also see me holding the tiny little phone taking photos with it but yeah there's not much to talk about in gallery and god that vibration motor sounds good calendar calculate oh what's a calculator look like curious it's rad good file manager usual stuff there don't really need to go into music test bfg division let's see how loud this thing is it's not that loud the best loudness on
it's not that good. Yeah. Safe to say it's nothing impressive. With the earpiece doubling as a loudspeaker, it's bound to lack in that department. Moving on, phone contacts messaging, don't need to open. I guess we could try the browser just as it is on here. Oh uh, yeah, the usual. What if I deny everything? Does it just, yeah, just closes, okay. And go to Soy's S23, I can't believe I was able to type that. Uh, well, there it is there. Oh, is it back in stock, is it? You can purchase it now for 66 US dollars. Oh, 75 dollars Australian. Oh, well, I got a dealio then. I mean, for web browsing, that actually wasn't, okay, I take that back. It's a bit slow. Realistically, people that purchase this device aren't gonna wanna use this as a daily driver. They're gonna want it for a backup device or something like that. But with the Unihertz Jelly Star, that makes sort of sense to have this as a daily driver. But this, with it lacking specs and stuff, it doesn't really make for a good daily driver, but more of just, yeah, a backup device. Something that you can just throw around and not really care too much about. Because that 1000 milliamp hour battery in this is not gonna last long at all, especially if you're going on to stuff like Facebook or using WhatsApp, it's just gonna go wee. I'll quickly try Chrome though. Well, Chrome is pretty much the same thing as browser. Same sort of speed, if not a little bit slower, to be honest. Is this actually from Soy's themselves? Oh, I've just went back. Oh, what have I done? This is the same store that I bought it off, so they're back in stock now. So the introduction of the video is going to be wrong now because they've got them back in stock. I mean, that's just me trying to load JPEGs with the MT6580. Speedy fast quad core that is also a thermonuclear chip for some reason. It's not going to be the best with web browsing. But the 2 gig of RAM does help it, so I've got to give it that. Quick shortcut maker we'll come back to, as well as CPU system info. I guess we'll just do the YouTube test though. We should get 480p, no problems. But if we can get 720p, it might give me a good idea of the display quality on this, which is YouTube actually doing anything? Or am I just rambling while YouTube is just, oh, never mind, it's okay. We go 720p, 60 FPS. Can you do it MT6580? I don't think you can, but prove me wrong. Go on, Speedy. Well, looks nice. Why does it sound compressed? And that's 720p. Let's be nice to it. 480p resolution should run perfectly fine. Wait for it to just go down in quality. There we go. Perfect. I mean, you're not going to see too much else from 480p to 720p on this display anyways. The colors actually don't look too bad, to be honest. They looked a little bit washed out at first, but seeing this, I mean, it's not as vivid as the Jelly Star, don't get me wrong there, but it's reasonable. For a $50 device, it's reasonable, but it's now more than $50, so I can't really say much about it. Also, it's getting warm, and when I went outside to do the camera test for this, whoa, it was a toasty one. I took the case off it when I went outside and done all the photos and videos. Man, it just got super toasty, which once again goes back to the MT6580 doing its job. Which, speaking of MT6580s, Geekbench 5, we're going to run Geekbench on this. If it actually works. Yes, it does work. Yay. MT6580. All right. Now I've tested the Liegu M9. I've tested that a while ago and that was the MT6580 with dual rear cameras, which was a first for a device like that. So I'm going to run the benchmark. It is 1216 in the morning. I might plug it into life support because I don't trust it, but I want to see if it gets the same scores as the Liegu with 51 single and 150 multi. I want to see if it's the exact same or if it's probably going to be like 50, 152 or something like that. It'd be close enough. So far, it's just at 0% and doing nothing. Oh, it's at 2%, I take that back. All right, well, now we just wait for it. We're at 27% at the moment. It's getting there. Come on, buddy, you can do it. It also charges really fast too, because, you know, it's only 1,000 milliamp hours. Give it like 45 minutes and it's usually charged all the way to 100%, which is pretty good. Let's try with type A to type C to see if that works. All right, it should be like five volt one amp. Wouldn't expect anything else from this. Okay, it's now 12.46 a.m. and the test has completed. We got 69 for the single core score and 164 for the multi-core score. So I'll display scores from other devices to the left here. And yeah, 51 and 150 on the Liegu. Oh, the Xcode Mate 10 also ran an NT6580 in it as well, but that got 65 and 125 for the multi. Maybe the MT6580 is slightly more powerful than, no, th that doesn't make sense, does it? It's also extremely hot as well. I'm gonna just take life support out for now. 
while these are all just numbers, at least I get a good idea of performance. Like the Sugar A100 was 104 for single and multi was 313, but that was an MT6739, which is definitely far more superior than uh, the MT6580 in this. Also, I've said MT6580 quite a lot in this review, so I hope you're all enjoying this so far. We know the performance roughly of this. So if I pop San Andreas on and we put all the settings up to maximum with it only being 480p, I would say this would be almost perfectly fine. I'm not gonna hold my breath for what's about to happen. Well, I've never seen that on mobile before. Wow, can gaming be done on the MT6580? Oh my God, look at this. Oh, oh no. Wait, 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 what? Go. Go that way, CJ. Okay, good. Oh god, it's not responding. <laughs> Is this one point multi touch? No, it's not. It's two point. Oh, this is painful. <laughs> this is painful. At least, can I get the jump? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't just slow down. Come on. So close. Oh, I made it, kind of. Uh, no, that's painful. I can't do this. Now, there's something really finicky with the touchscreen. I mean, it works completely fine now, but in game, no, it just, no, no worky. Let's check the specs real quickly, just to see what's in this fella. S23 Pro, A54 by 480, MT6580, 8.1, 2 gig LP DDR5. DDR5? In this? That's not bad, 50 bucks, DDR5, and the flash is 16 gig. Yeah, the Micron Q2 J96R. We'll have to see if that's actually the chips inside of this. System on chip, the usual, Mali 400 MP. S23, Oreo. Let's see what this touch screen is all about. Oh, it's two point multi-touch. Well, that's the basic of basics. 120 pixels per inch as well. Two gig LP DDR5. That seems a little bit too advanced for this, but it might be. DDR5 with an MT6580, that doesn't seem right. Camera, 5.3 megapixels for the back camera is what the 3072 by 1728 means and the front is 1.2 megapixels i reckon it's interpolating because if i look back at the photos there's no way that's a 5 megapixel shot battery 900 milliamp hours you're very close well done thermal oh the cpu yeah 48 degrees the cpu's up which uh, gives you a good idea of what's going on sensors accelerometer light and proximity sensor but i don't think there's actually any built into it let me try the other application really really quickly yeah the camera's not too sure that's some weird stuff going on but we definitely have Oreo on this, and I've tried to redump the system files, and I can only get the applications from this, but that's it, nothing else. Memory, 16 gig, two gigs of RAM, 7.7 .7 inches of the screen size, yes. Battery is 610,526 milliamp hours on this one, not bad. Though the CPU is now down to 25 degrees, that doesn't make sense. Sensors, oh yeah, light and proximity are just generic. We have an accelerometer though, which definitely does work. Cameras, yeah, 5.2 megapixel and 1.2 megapixel. That's very odd. When I tear it down, I'll see on the flex ribbons what it says on there. When I go to edit this video and do the camera test, I'm either probably gonna have to put two megapixel or the resolutions displayed here. Lastly on this is Quick Shortcut Maker and a whole lot of fingerprints too. What mayhem can we cause in this? Artificial switch, let's try this. Ta-da! <laughs> We have fake specs. Well, there you go. You wanted a welcome device, you got a welcome device. Here it is. So I can put one terabyte, 32 gigs of RAM, 5G, 13 megapixel front camera, 26 megapixel rear camera. Oh, let's put a 960p display on this. An Android 10, right model. Please input your model. When modifying the model, please turn on the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, WLAN, hotspot. Ensure that all models take effect and not more than 40 characters. We'll just go okay to that. Change success. Let's see if I've just now given the Soyuz S 23 Pro, one terabyte. Wow, amazing. I go to the Android 10, e oh, look at the Android 10 Easter egg. <laughs> That's so jank. And it's broken too. It's still the MT6580 though. Does it show 5G now? Oh my God, if you could set the top right corner, 5G. Yes, you are, friend. 5G you are. I may as well leave it as a fake spec, eh? I'll write the model again, because I'll go back to Android settings and I'll see if the Android 9 Easter egg is on here. There it is. Pi is on here. So there's another one. Oh, that's just the model. Well, at least you've got to see that then. But what else can we do? What other mayhem can we cause? Oh, face unlock. Oh my God, face unlock. I didn't give that a creepy face at all. So did I actually do face unlock? No, I didn't. So there's remnants of it left over. Unfortunate though. Factory test by A Mobile. What is this? 
I just questioned what is this. It's very simple smalls, it's a test menu. That's it. At least you got to see the artificial switch menu. Good to see it here, but it's very strange that you can't actually change the CPU. Usually you can change the CPU, but still MT6580 with one terabyte. Yep, just, just, just agree with it, okay. That is everything on the Soyuz S23 Pro. I hope I'm saying that right, Soyuz. It could be so, yes. Someone will tell me. I've pronounced it Soyuz in the past, so that shouldn't be an issue. What do I think of this? For a $50 device, the MT6580 straight away lets it down, but it's the most cutest MT6580 device I have ever seen. It is adorable, and it looks like an S23 Ultra, which is also kind of nifty. Past that, though, to purchase this and use this as a main phone would be a bad idea, but for a backup phone or something, you could potentially get away with this. Oh, we're not at the teardown just yet. Just may as well start while I'm here. Oh, is it a kickstand? There you go. It's kind of a kickstand. See? Kickstand. You know what? If that had 4G, I could maybe say this would be a fun little thing to play around with. I mean, as it is, it's a fun little thing to play around with. But really, it's just the usual hardware that we've come to know and love from Welcome. But it's a cute Welcome. As I've said, it's probably the most adorable Welcome device I've ever seen. And I think it's time that I tear you apart because my conclusion is just very much... It's not worth purchasing unless you want it as a novelty. At least it has Android Oreo. I guess that's not too bad. Teardown time. There's this tool that I've got and it's a 0.1 millimeter pry tool and it just gets into anything. Perfect. And with that, we're in. See how easy that was? Wait a second, what the hell? Oh, there's two screws holding it down. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say, how does one tear this apart? Time for smalls to question things. What happened here? Did they just hot glue? Just feel wee. I also like this area too. I'll just pull that off. Oh no, hang on. You don't want to do that. They've hot glued that down. Okay. Of course they have. Almost killed myself. Here's the five cameras. Well, the four cameras just there. What was the point of including tape? That didn't serve much purpose, Soyuz. Put that on there. It's kind of misshapen now, but that's okay. They just used some glue and just put that down. It's no problems. Let's take two screws out then. I reckon the screen comes out. The screen comes out, doesn't it? Maybe the back just comes off entirely. Hello, you absolute legends. You know, get old Carl. Oh no, we should be able to just get into it like this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is janky. There's our angry bees just there. Oh, we found another screw. I can get to the uh, sim tray too. Construction level is amazing. 10 out of 10. Would, would recommend. The battery is just soldered into place like so. It, it works. Okay. All of the buttons have just kind of uh, sort of flown away, which is fine. Oh, okay. I have seen my issue. <laughs> That's not my issue, but uh, anywho. This sim tray. How do we get the sim tray out? Question. Why do I have Katamari songs stuck in my head? Na 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 Katamari Damasi. Oh, there's a speaker there too, by the way. That's the tiny little speaker. We're in. Oh, I damaged the shielding by myself. Oh, that's good. Oh, that camera is definitely not 1.2 megapixels. The rear one actually looks reasonable. I got it. It's a part. So that is the front there. We've got just the screen ribbon and the digitizer just there. Nothing really too much to look at. No sensors or anything like that. So that's fairly basic. But what we want to take a look at is this cluster of um, chaos. Can I get my um, cards back now? Cheers. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. The LED is also attached to the rear camera as well. There is a date of August 2023. This was manufactured. Microphone down the bottom there, a couple of contacts, the reset switch, buttons at the top there. Uh, yeah, don't mind everything just dangling off this. It's okay. It says 16 plus 128 there. What is that then? The front camera is right here. I don't think that is anything past 0.3 megapixels, but I could be completely wrong there. I'll see if that code comes up with anything on Google or not. I highly doubt it. But this, on the other hand, the rear camera, there's a code just there, XR2155C25. I wonder if this is actually 5 megapixels. It's a bigger camera than usual, so maybe it is. I'm honestly not too sure about that. Since I have already pulled the shielding off right there, may as well keep going, hey? Perfect. 
we're in. I don't think I killed this, to be honest, but hey, you never know. Inside, we have the glorious MT6580. Good old friend. And do we have the Micron module? That is definitely not DDR5. No way is that DDR5. I will check this up real quick. I've quickly Googled, and I don't think that's DDR5. There's no way that's DDR5. It doesn't look very new. It's got all crap on there. So I'm not terribly sure about that. I'm going to use this black piece of tape as a heatsink now. There we go. Perfect. Well, I guess that's the teardown for this. So I'm going to go ahead and try and put this back together. Notice how I used the word try. <laughs> Hello. It's still alive. Did I change the boot logo or I just don't remember what the boot logo looked like? Okay. Oh. Um... Kill switch. Let's see if it works. I think I fixed the vibration motor. Probably not. Oh, did it boot? Oh, it booted. It booted. I didn't kill it. I killed the speaker, though. No, I didn't. I didn't kill the speaker. Let me just keep trying to put it back together first. Oh, that bit of tape held the LED flash in. Oh, the LED flash is not there. Where did it go? We can put them in there like this, right? Just listen to me. And then we put the LED flash in there like so. Okay. And then we just sandwich it back together. And hopefully we can just align it up like so. And boom. Safe to say that's kind of not going to hold itself together. There's a fix. Don't mind. If I just... There we go, fixed. Don't need to use adhesive inside of the phone. Just tape it together. Problem solved. Look at that. Beautiful. If I say so myself, it's factory. You can have your little SIM tray back, buddy. With our buddy still working, I'll display all the specs on screen for the $50 Soyuz S23 Pro Mini S23 Ultra clone thing from AliExpress that you folks generously donated to see, and I've got to thank you all very soon. But yeah, this is all the specifications for such device. Oh, it's falling apart already. It was fun having a look at this, though. Oh, look at this. I fixed the vibration motor, quality engineering. Yeah, look, the specs aren't nothing much, but, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. But yeah, that is a deep dive into this. No, the vibration motor's still horrible. Oh, what if I just put it back in the case, yeah? Aha! Perfect! That back panel's not going to go anywhere now. But yeah, that's everything about this device. I don't think there's anything else that I need to discuss about this. I think I've demonstrated everything in this very, very long rambly review. It could go in my collection with my real deal. Add the, the tidy little... Oh, it's so cute. It's adorable. I used the clone in the thumbnail because... I needed to use this to take photos. That's okay, just agree with it. But this review would not have been possible without the generosity of all of the folks displayed on screen. Sorry, you can see crap. Thank you to all of the folks displayed on screen for donating towards seeing this item, the other item, and the other item that I have to get around to reviewing. I appreciate you all so much, and I keep saying that you all keep funding e-waste, but you all don't mind doing it, and in exchange, I'm giving you all a hopefully entertaining review on these cheapo bootleg devices, which I hope you all thoroughly enjoy. With that being said, you've made it to the end of the video, which means that you enjoyed watching this, which is awesome. I hope you all did thoroughly enjoy this one, though, but if you had to use the timestamps to skip through this video, that's completely fine, and once again, the advertising at the start of this video, I know that went for a long time, but I just really wanted to cover it. We got a welcome device at the end of the day. It's been kind of a while since I've looked at a new welcome device, so this done the job. The only system files that I've got from this will be in the description below, and there'll also be other apps to test your own device to see the specs and stuff like that, like device info hardware and all that sort of stuff. Feel free to use them if you want to. I've just put them there just in case you want to. That's it for another installment in the iWish series. Was it worth having a look at? I think it was. At the end of the day, it was worth having a look at. Too bad it didn't have a pen with it, though. That would have really sold the idea of a Mini S23 Ultra clone, but it's close enough. The next video should be looking at a mini PC. I know I said that in the last video, but I'm scheduling things around and I'm all over the place working on four videos at the same time. But yeah, that's going to be a mini PC next. So not really for everyone. This is more a mainstream video for everybody. So I hope you've all thoroughly enjoyed watching this one. I am rambling because it's almost 2 a.m. in the morning. It's actually 1.33 a.m. Sorry, late s'mores. I thank you all very much for watching this video. I really, really, really do appreciate all the love and support. And we're almost at 90k, by the way, which is very, very scary. <laughs> it's, it's, it's overwhelming, but it's also very scary. So uh, thank you all once again to everyone who's, who's tuning in and watching this random idiot reviewing random cheap crap that you folks 
love to donate to me to purchase and I appreciate you all. And also apologies to John H, but I'm gonna keep the old logo. I might use the new logo for maybe like online stuff, like maybe my Instagram or something like that. Everyone said that the old logo was better because it has charm to it, but I won't let that newly designed smalls icon go to waste. I will use it. So thank you, John. But everyone's just like, no, no, don't get rid of the old one. So I'll keep the old one. As always, please take care, stay safe, be good people. See, look, old icon, but I could put the new icon. Maybe I could use the new icon in the thumbnails for the videos. That might work, possibly. Give it more pizzazz, I don't know. But yeah, please take care, stay safe, be good people, keep being awesome, and I'll see you all in the next video, which should be the mini PC review thing, which is going to be all over the place. So look forward to seeing that one. But until that one, please take care of yourself, keep being awesome, as I said, and I'll see you all in the next one. How many fingers do I want to wave? There we go, all of them. One band-aid, thank you very much. Maybe I should just do that from now on, because I don't have to band-aid that one up, but I just have been doing it for so long now, but realistically, that's the thumbs up in my icon, so I may as well just keep using it on that one. Is this ugly? You can tell me if that looks ugly or not. That used to look a lot worse than that, and at least it's actually a nail now. All right. Love you all, give you a kiss, Mwah. good night. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.